Hello my loves, it's Lizanne here from High Vibes Life and today I wanted to come to you and talk a little bit about what I've been doing to during quarantine to stay healthy and to keep my vibes up. So I want to put a disclaimer out in the very beginning and that is that nothing I'm going to tell you here is medical advice or is it saying that you need to do the same thing I'm doing or that you need to feel the same way I'm feeling. It is just what I'm doing. So when you're a teacher, especially uh, and a coach and especially one that is uh, for self-love and high vibes life and mindset, you tend to hold yourself to a really high standard. I didn't really know how I was supposed to be feeling. I felt like this numbness that I had been feeling and this these feelings of depression that were coming upon me and uh, a lot of anxiety attacks, they seemed so displaced and yet so relevant at the same time. And when I really gave myself permission to be where I was and to feel what I feel, I realized, you know what, triggers happen to us all and I went through a very traumatic childhood which set me up to be very extra sensitive to um, conditions where I am dependent on leaders and people that I don't even truly know and to be making the best decisions for me and my family and to be being honest with me and that doesn't come easily for me. I don't think it comes easily for anybody and it especially does not come easy for the one who has been traumatized in their formative years. So the first thing I needed to do was I needed to allow myself just to be where I am and just to feel what I feel regardless of the fact that I'm a coach, a life coach, and regardless of the fact that I teach high vibes life. I was feeling what I feel and I'm still human. And once I just allowed it without judgment, then it actually started to alleviate quite a bit. And I was able to start saying, okay, this is how I'm feeling. Now let's deal with this. One of the first things I started implementing right away was I needed to start feeling again because I felt very numb and dissociated. And it was kind of paralyzing me and keeping me from being able to uh, feel any kind of normalcy, even though my life in general hasn't changed a whole lot just at what I do on a day-to-day -day basis because the world around me has changed so much and because I'm an empath on top of that so I tend to absorb the energies that are around me um, it, I pretty much had started really numbing out and I was feeling very dissociated from life and that dissociation of course can lead to deep um, depression because you're pressing down how you feel you're separating yourself from your from from feeling basically in dissociation you're pulling yourself away from your body and from your experience so I was really numbing out and so I needed to ground myself again and so I really made an effort to up my morning routine of clearing the energy I've been having a lot of insomnia and so I decided that every morning what I needed to do was number one I needed to get back to, to giving thanks first thing in the morning which I practice normally anyways but I feel like since I've been numbing out I've just kind of been all consumed with just thinking about the whole COVID thing and not really from my heart thinking about the things that I still have to be thankful for and this has been very helpful to give things because it reminds me that this life that I'm experiencing isn't the only thing that exists. It also put me in touch with the fact that I have everything I need. That at this moment, with mindfulness, that at this moment, in this moment in time, I'm full, I'm supported, I have a home, um, I have nature, I have food. Um, they're just you know I have things I can do I have a TV and internet and I have access through FaceTime to, to family members and on a regular basis I mean there's so many things to be thankful for and that I do have and that I'm not in any real intimate danger right now the first thing I'll do is I give thanks in the morning and then I clear the table in my living room I wipe it down light a candle 
sit down with a journal, sit down with a cup of coffee, put on some energy lifting music from YouTube, uh, energy clearing music or energy lifting music or some kind of ambience that is very relaxing and soothing. And I sit down and I meditate. I completely clear my mind and become present. And sometimes I'll do it for a couple minutes and sometimes I'll do it 5, 10, 15 minutes. It just depends on how I'm feeling that morning. But I try to give thanks and then have this ritual of lighting a candle and doing some meditation and maybe some reading and just some down time first thing in the morning to clear the energy and to set the energetic field for the day. I wanted to recommend a program to you and it's uh, you can find it on Amazon Prime through the channel of Gaia and you can get Gaia for a seven day free trial if you, if you don't have it already. But it's called the Healing Field. And there's so many good programs through Gaia anyways, but this is just so amazing. And it talks, uh, it goes into more detail about quantum physics and how every thought we think it affects the whole field around us and how energy healing is going to replace pharmaceuticals in the future. They're proving it scientifically how much more effective it is than pharmaceuticals. And so having said that is part of the reason why I do some of the other things I do. The other thing I do is I get my water and I teach this in my course as well, but I get a glass of water and I think I've even done a video on this and I literally charge it water. Uh, they have shown, if you've um, watched any of Dr. Emoto's work that he's done, his studies that he's done on water and freezing it and you know, listening to classical music or putting classical music near it or speaking to it, it you can charge water and you can actually change the crystalline structure of the water by speaking and singing into it and speaking. So I will literally get my water and this is um, filtered water from our well and I speak into it, love, joy, happiness, good health, love. And I'll take my little glass straw here and it tingles in my glass. Love, joy, happiness good health, love, joy, happiness, good health. And when I do that, I'll do it three or four times. And I try to bring just real vibrant, healthy thoughts into my mind as I do it. And literally it'll oxygenate your water more. In this water, I have chlorophyll drops. So um, I don't eat a lot of greens, um, but I do like my salads once in a while, but I only eat them when I when I really truly crave them. I don't force myself to eat greens, but I do love chlorophyll water. And so I'll add chlorophyll, which helps to oxygenate your blood as well. So I add that to my water and I crave the chlorophyll. So, and then I drink that because I, and I just imagine it going to every cell and bringing love and health and joy into every cell into my body that those molecules of water reach. Now, I've heard different um, estimates on this, but it is estimated approximately 70% of our body is water. So how you speak to yourself is just as important. And the thoughts that you're thinking and the things that you're meditating upon are going to affect your body and your health and your immune system. And I realized how much negativity I had been letting into my life and not even meaning to, but every time I turn on my um, internet or some, somebody was talking about the, the COVID and talking about all the um, deaths and both of my son and my husband are in the medical field so I hear things through them and I was noticing it was triggering a lot of fear in me and a lot of anxiety and I didn't even necessarily just feel it right away I didn't recognize it but not shortly after I would feel the shortness of breath and I could see that I was back in this like fear state and so I started limiting how much information I allow to come in about what's going on as we lift the vibration and lift ourselves um, emotionally 
uh, from this, we're going to not only boost our own immune system, but we are going to quick, more quickly, uh, collectively affect the whole grid. And again, if you watch the healing fields, you the healing field uh, through Gaia, you will understand this at a more deeper uh, level and a more scientific level. I just feel like that is probably the most powerful thing I can do. It's not worrying and um, washing my hands and wearing a mask. Not that those things aren't doing anything, they have their place. But I think even more, more powerful is keeping my vibes, my energy healthy and happy and positive and believing in the health of my body and the regeneration of life and not allowing everything that's going around me to make me feel scared and I mean fear is like one of the most damaging emotions to the body that we have because we have the fight or flight response and so the blood comes in to the muscles and away from the vital organs and it literally um, is so um, unhealthy on so many levels not that I don't again I think it's so important number one to allow what you feel so not that if I feel fearful I go oh no 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 I can't feel fearful no but to allow that and to say okay something just triggered me and I'm feeling fearful but then saying what can I do right now to soothe that and to feel better like um, sometimes when I'm you know I just need to breathe I need to come back to breath come back to mindfulness and remind myself I'm okay in this moment I'm okay no I don't know what the future is gonna be who can know but I can at this moment think about the, the fact that I am safe right now and that is so important to remind myself that I am a very capable human being who is safe and who is who is 52 years old and has been cared for her whole life who has always had many many trials come into my life and come through them all and been cared for and come through a better person in the long run. Another thing I do, speaking of water, is I get a squirt bottle and I fill it with spring water or distilled water. And again, I speak into it like hap happiness, health, joy. I'll add essential oils and then I'll spray it around my house. Like if I add orange, I'll add it for happiness and joy. And if I add rose, it'll be for love. And uh, I might add lavender for health and, and um, frankincense to raise the um, the spiritual essence of my home and I go and I literally spray into the air like up toward the ceiling in circles all around my rooms and I just say love happiness joy and I always say in any energies that are beneath the energy of pure unconditional love and above I ask that you would leave and be transcended into something better and I'll just go through and spray my whole house and kind of like almost like a sage but with water that also brings the dust particles down out of the house. I dust with it. For my home, it just always makes the home feel so much fresher and brighter. I usually open up the windows as well. Another thing I've been doing is taking Epsom salt baths. I'll mix the baking soda, essential oils, and Epsom salts together and put it in my tub. And I will soak in that. And that is very detoxifying. It's very relaxing. Uh, anytime you can reduce stress, relax your muscles, you're raising your vibration, you're raising your immune system. And again, I will speak into the water as the water is coming into the tub. I'll speak love and just positive words into the water to charge the water with high vibes. Probably about every other day, I am doing some form of yoga, back exercise, stretching, anything that feels good to my body, to movement. Um, as you saw, one of my videos was dancing. Sometimes I'll dance. Anything that gets the blood circulating and that feels good to my bus muscles and my body. Another important thing I've been doing is planting seeds. So I think about this not just planting them physically. So planting, I've been planting flower seeds. I've been planting cucumbers, uh, potato eyes in my garden to grow potatoes. Uh, onions, just any, I've been planting tomatoes, cuc oh, I said cucumbers, I planted some seeds of watermelon and cantaloupe the other day. My cucumbers are coming up, some of my flowers are, I haven't seen my watermelon seeds come up yet, but hopefully they will. So I've been planting seeds for future food, 
I've been planting seeds like right here right now planting seeds of positivity as much as possible now that hasn't been all I've there have been a couple times that I have planted some negative seeds out there but I've gone back through when I've recognized it and I up dug them back up and uprooted them I thought that's not a healthy seed I'm gonna get that back out of there so I've been trying to plant energetically as well as physically uh, literally into the earth good seeds for the future another type of seed that I have been planting is a lot of love and compassion so I've been trying to call people that I love or text them and ask them if they're okay and that I'm thinking about them ask them how they're doing and giving them an opportunity to have somebody check in on them and care about them and these don't necessarily have to be high risk people I think everybody at this point needs somebody to think about them and I think the most important thing that I started implementing through this is just carrying on with life uh, I noticed that for a while it was just so hard to carry on just to I mean we were eating and cleaning and doing things but I didn't feel like I was just carrying on with life I felt like I was um, like again dissociating and going over and over in my mind what was going on and trying to figure out and what's going on and what's true and what's not true and where's this all coming from and where's it all going and you know are we gonna survive it and is it that you know how important is it that we you know bleach every little thing in our house or just you know make sure we're careful and wash our hands when we're out you know trying to find that balance and on and on and on and on and finally it was just you know what there comes a point where you just have to trust the process and you have to just carry on with life and like I said it's just reminding me that I have everything I need right now I'm not deprived in any way thank God my heart goes out to all those who are suffering through this uh, with loved ones in the hospital I don't take that lightly I don't make this video um, without a thought in my heart that there are people that are in a grave condition right now and that when I retire at night I remember them in my prayers and I think about them and I think about the ones that I know and I give a prayer out for the ones that I don't know that it is a serious thing but at the same time we still need to do our part to heal and this is my part and this is how I am moving through this time of quarantine so hopefully some of this has been um, helpful hopefully it's been encouraging and if nothing else it's just been a time for us to sit and um, gab if you have enjoyed it please let me know give me a, a thumbs up and if you know anybody that would be helped by it, please share the video. And I would love for you to leave a comment. Let me know how you're coping, what you're doing, what's been helpful for, t for you, or even your struggles, what you've been struggling with. I would love to hear from you down in the comments. Have a good day.